So I'm making this quick video to uh, talk about how to make a multi-author blog and how to use it to boost your sales rank and book sales. Um, this is something I came across. I'm always looking for you know, what other authors are doing to promote their books or, or work, how they're working together to do joint author promotion. So this is a joint author blog, which means um, it was set up by one person, but multiple people have access and can log on it. Um, so over here, this is basically the Water World Mermaids are a bunch of uh, women fantasy authors. So the tagline is Fantastic Women Writers, which is a good idea. The site is um, pretty nice, really designed, looks pretty good. Over here, there's a Twitter account under the same name. Um, I haven't really checked how that's doing or how many followers. It's kind of hard to do social media when multiple people are doing it because nobody really um, has the control and the responsibility for it. Oops. Let me go back to where I was. Okay, so right now they're basically just, um, they haven't been using it very much, but they've been doing cover reveals and a few things. Um, but the interesting thing is I already checked this site out. When you're looking at other people's blogs, you kind of want to, it's hard to see not exactly how successful they are, but you can gauge um, how much site authority they have, which is kind of important. Oops, to know. Let me try this again. Um, I actually already did this. So I, I just used um, SEOreviewtools.com to check how they're doing, and I found that um, their site has a site authority of about 42, I think, which is pretty good. It's on a scale of 100. So most people, when you start off, you might be at like five. Um, and blogs who have been up for several years, they have lots of backlinks that site has a stronger site authority, which means if Google has to decide, um, for example, here's a cover reveal about Project Pandora, it's a new book by somebody else. If Google, if somebody Googles Project Pandora and they find all of this stuff, um, Google has to decide which sites they're gonna show first. Let me see actually what comes up. Um, so here you have Entangled Publishing. This is published by Entangled Publishing. You have Goodreads, because you're always going to have Goodreads first. Um, this is somebody else's cover reveal, just Ricardo. This is also the kind of thing you would be wanting to do if you were looking to promote your book and you're looking for cover reveals. You'd want to be Googling other books in your genre that are similar to yours to see what other sites have talked about them or done cover reveals. So like if I had a book similar to this one, which I, I do actually, um, I might want to contact this blogger and say, hey, you know, I have a similar book, would you feature me? Um, but then here's where things get kind of interesting. So this is just a Google search. These are the things that show up, but um, here's Young Adult Book Central. That's another good young adult one. Anyway, because this site has pretty good site authority, it'll probably show up on the first five pages of Google or something. Um, ideally, it's hard to get one specific book to show up on the first page of Google because there's so many people talking about a specific book. It's a lot easier to rank on the first page of Google for um, topics. For example, best young adult mermaid books. Um, I believe if you search for best young adult mermaid books on one of my sites, comes up on the first page of Google. Um, this is my site, it's just my author blog, but because I wrote this article, um, that's one of the reasons why it's nice to write, uh, I call them joint author promotions, but really you don't need other people's help to do this kind of thing. All I did was collect 32 mermaid novels for young adult readers. I put them all together in a big post. Um, I got a lot of those authors to share. It becomes a really good piece of content. Uh, the other part of site authority is the more people share and point to your blog post, uh, the, the better it's going to rank for certain Keywords, and that's why I'm already ranking on the first page of Google. Um, and I try to do this for, you know, not just mermaid books, but just about every <clears throat> genre. So what I was going to do with this video, they have a site that has good site authority, but they're not really using it to promote their book. So what should happen um, is they should be writing content that shows up in Google, which is easier for them because they have a lot of site authority, and they should then be sending readers straight to their books on Amazon. So part of that is conversion for natural people. Um, so regular people, if they happen to find one of these articles, and this could happen a lot by, like you need to be writing the right kind of articles that show up in Google so that people will find you. But then once people find you, you need to be getting them 
to be aware of your books and sending them to your book. So even for example, um, what they could be doing, because they're doing these cover reveals, at the bottom they could say, if you like this book in this genre, you might also want to check out you know, these three books by the authors <coughs> of this blog. So they could be doing a little more to focus on promoting their own books. They do have a list in the pages over here, they have a list of the authors who are involved. But even on those pages, um, they have links these links, they, they link to Twitter or Facebook or whatever, but they're kind of um, they're empty because they don't have any keywords. And you really want, this says click for a complete list of her other books and where to find them. It goes back to her website. There's no keywords in, in this except for her first name. Um, and really you'd want to use some genre keywords. You'd want to use a list of the actual books. I would put all the covers on here. Um, like if someone actually came to this page, there's not a lot on here that would convince me that I needed to go over <clears throat> and read more books about that author. So I would put the covers, I'd put a short description of the book, um, and I would link to the website. It's a good idea to link to web, like every link you get um, is good for your site authority. So because this, pay, this blog has a lot of site authority, I would want links back to my author page, but I would also want links straight to my Amazon books. Um, and I would want them to be keyword rich. So instead of like genre, all of this stuff, I would say, um, title of this book, it's a young adult fantasy, dark fantasy horror, whatever, and I would highlight all of that, I would link it straight to the book on Amazon, because you also want the Amazon book to rank higher for specific keywords. Um, let me click on <clears throat> another, I haven't really checked all of the authors, but I, I assume they're kind of similar, so there's a lot of text here, so there's a lot of information but there's, not, there's no links even on this one, so she's not linking to her author website, um, which is a mistake because, like I said, this book, this blog has a lot of site authority. Not only should you be sending real traffic to where you want them to go, but you should also be telling Google that there's a relationship between your author website and this author, like this multi-author blog. Um, so I would do that, like I would have all of these pages have more book titles and book covers that link to the, like, buy the book on Amazon, and also click here to read more about the author. Um, a lot of this stuff is kind of wasted, wasted content, because, like, if a reader doesn't know this author already, and they're just clicking this to find out more about the author, they're not really going to care about all of this stuff, um, especially for fiction. Fiction authors don't care that much about, you know, how many awards the the author has written, all they care about is, you know, do they have a book that I want to read? So you would want to have um, a, a cover and a nice description or a hook or the summary, and then you'd really want to have an offer. So I would say, like, go back to this author's website to get a free book, or buy the book right now on Amazon. And I would have that multiple times for all of the, maybe not all the books, but maybe like your three strongest um, books that you think are good introductions to your writing, uh, especially if you have three books that you can kind of hook their attention with or, or something that you give away on your site. But then also even on the homepage, um, I'd be a little bit more careful about what shows up on the homepage. I would have something like an introduction page or like about us getting started, uh, if it's your first time here. Because readers, most people, they'll, they'll, they'll come to a site and they'll leave immediately. Like they might accidentally find one site, they'll read it, um, <clears throat> they might click on something, these say add to Goodreads, but there's not even, let's see, there's a giveaway, Amazon card. Seems like they don't have a link even to Amazon. So like it's nice of them to do these cover reveals for the authors, but these should really be pointing to Amazon at the end of it. Like if anybody finds this page, there's really very little for them to do. Oh, here it is, pre-order on Amazon, but that's really small. Um, there should be a really big, you know, buy now on Amazon, or sign up to the, to the author's newsletter. There's basically, um, when you give people too many options and you give them all of these social media links, people will just tune out and they'll leave right away. They won't even see this stuff, sign up to the newsletter or buy the Amazon. It's too small and there's too much other stuff going on. You wanna give them one or two big options or like one big option that you really want them to take and then one smaller option, like in case they don't, buy the book on Amazon, at least they can sign up to get something for free. Um, you want to make it really easy and you want to catch their attention with a, a juicy offer because most people aren't looking 
for this stuff and they're not going to stick around to explore the site. <clears throat> they're going to bounce, they're going to leave you know, within a couple of seconds. So it's your job when people land on your site um, to hook their attention and to tell them what you want them to do next. So you tell them, you know, go sign up or go buy this book or whatever. But then also, even if, even if nobody, like even if there's no real people on your site, having links to the Amazon page, and like I said, instead of pre-order on Amazon, you need to have something like get this, like for me, for my mermaid stuff, I'll say get this young adult fantasy mermaid book. That's keyword stuff, and I put a lot of keywords in there, but that means if somebody's searching for young adult fantasy mermaid books on Google or on Amazon, it's more likely that my content will come up because I'm using more keywords in my content um, and linking to my Amazon page and my other, other website and stuff. So you need to be smarter about um, your links and also the process that you send people through when they do come to your site, where they go next. But then, um, but then, like I was saying, even if it's not a real person, even if it's just telling Google that your site has this kind of content around these keywords um, and <clears throat> sending those backlinks to your Amazon page and your author website, which is good because your site authority and your SEO will get you more traffic. So like these authors should be making more of an effort to send traffic and to build more links to their main author website and to their Amazon pages because they have a really strong joint author blog here. It's just not doing very much for their individual author platform, which means it's not really doing much to sell their books. And that's really the, the point. So that's kind of the problem when you do a joint author blog. If nobody's really blogging anymore, and if you don't have a lot of read, like if it's not, um, if it's not getting a lot of traffic and if people aren't coming to this site and then going and buying the author's books, so this is kind of a waste of effort. It might feel like it's kind of a waste of time to keep blogging about stuff here if it's not converting anybody into actual readers or it's not selling more books. Um, it is a really good idea to do a joint author blog like this, and it is a good idea to be blogging a lot of content and focusing on and supporting other indie authors or traditionally published authors in your, in your genre. Um, but if it's not selling more books, which is kind of the point, then it, you know you can feel like, why am I spending time on this? Why am I wasting my effort if I'm not seeing any results? Um, and that's really something you can fix, especially like they can fix it pretty quickly because they already have this site that, that's been up for a while that has a really good site authority. It takes time to build site authority, so they actually have something really valuable now. Um, so for example, I have some sites that have really good site authority, so I'll want to focus on supporting them and promoting their books and linking to them from my sites because then maybe they'll do the same thing for me on their site. Once you have a blog that has a lot of site authority, that gives you a lot of power. That gives you something to offer. Um, so like, in, you know, it's, it's good. A lot of authors will say like, I want to swap blog posts or I want to feature you or whatever. But most authors starting off who have an individual author website they don't, they're not going to have a great site authority. So even if they focus on, even if they feature you on the blog, on their blog, um, they don't get a lot of traffic and those links aren't very valuable. They're not worth very much because um, they're just starting out or they're just a single author. So it's going to be, it's going to take a lot longer for them to build things up the way that these authors have done. Um, anyway, I hope this video helps anybody else who's interested in doing a joint author blog or who wants to build their own website. Um, with a focus on building your, your site authority and your SEO um, and eventually like selling more books. That's, that's the ultimate goal. A lot of, I know a lot of authors feel like blogging is a waste of time or they don't want to you know, spend time blogging and they don't know what to blog about because the blog isn't getting, that's not where their sales are coming from. That, it's not doing anything for them. Um, that's, most authors have that problem, but that's because most authors are doing things wrong. And if you fix a few things, um, then your blog can be a really significant source of sales and traffic. A lot of my books stick pretty well on Amazon uh, with very little promotion because my blogs get traffic and readers, when they find themselves on my blog, they, I have really strong offers to sign up to my newsletter or to get the books on Amazon. I have a lot of links. All of my links and all of my high authority sites help my books on Amazon show up better, they're better visibility, which means you know, there's a higher chance that they'll get more sales. Anyway, um, I'm gonna stop this video because now I, I've kind of exhausted the topic, but I hope I mentioned some things that you can use to improve your own website.